One thing I do want to just go through a little history for uh, many of you. First of all, since we met last January, we discussed progress on meeting the goal we set last year of having 67% of our working population educated and trained beyond high school by the year 2025. And as you know, we've talked about this many times, there's a skills gap in our country in North Carolina on many areas from mechanics to electronics to nursing to IT. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. And if we don't meet that, those areas, even trucking, we have a shortage of trucking drivers right now in North Carolina. If we don't meet those needs, we are not going to be able to fill the jobs or recruit new businesses if they can't find the talent. So, uh, but there's no doubt to get those jobs and uh, even jobs where there is enough talent at this point in time, there's no doubt that at a minimum we need to have at least 67 percent of our working population get that further education beyond uh, high school. And uh, this is one of Catherine's major goals, and she'll be talking about that more. I also want to do something we haven't got a chance to do, and, and I hope to do this later on in a, in, in a few weeks, but we haven't got to celebrate the Connect North Carolina bonds. And uh, it, se it seems like uh, it happened two years ago, but it was uh, just recently when that happened during the primary, and that was, to me, one of the most historic bond referendums in the state of North Carolina, and there's no doubt that that had a huge impact on uh, especially our community college system and our university system. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, George, with your leadership, and I really appreciate you as temporary president just stepping right in and doing a great job. We couldn't have done it without your team, but having $350 million uh, new money invested in the community colleges was crucial. I've been to so many of the schools now and seen their facilities, many of them built in the 1960s, which is, you know, that Stalinistic architecture. Not only it's not good for learning, but uh, it's very expensive, and, and uh, we're going to have to redo a lot of facilities in there to, to make it uh, prime buildings. Rick, sorry, a lot of your buildings are still that way. You're your inspiration. You're in the 50s. Uh, <laughs> we'll move into their facilities. <laughs> that might be Rick's got the worst facilities in the command time. But uh, in, in the university system, the $980 million, I mean, what an historic uh, complement to the university system also. You know, when I went to go visit with uh, uh, the Chancellor of UNC Chapel Hill, the medical building there, and saw the deplorable condition that we're supposed to be training the best doctors in the world in, they were like, also, that was a 60s building, uh, Stalinistic design. They were actually teaching doctors in the hallway next to the drinking fountains. And, uh, the labs are in horrible shape. Same thing through at Western Carolina. The engineering buildings at North Carolina and T were in deplorable shape. And this is not how we're going to train the best students. But to have a resounding, well over 60% of the people support that, I think is a real testament to all of you. And I'm also proud of what we're doing with the zoos and National Guard facilities and water sewer. But you know, we need to celebrate that, not forget that just happens like it's dropped down. I'd like to also thank two representatives of one is uh, Senator Barefoot is here, Chad, very nice seeing you, and Craig Horn is here, who without the legislature, we wouldn't have got this done at all. So um, y'all need to give them a round of applause. Uh, I also need to let you know, and I'm going I'm to surprise our budget director, Drew, in a, in a few minutes, because I'd like him to give a little budget update on where the numbers are. You weren't expecting this, but I think it's a good tell him, kind of knowing, just in general, uh, 10,000 feet. Yeah. Look at this look. Right? <laughs> 20 minutes, Tom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes with no notes. Um, I do want to let you know that I am rolling out the budget that I'm recommending to the legislature as is required by my law, and I'll be uh, hopefully finishing the rollout between now and uh, next week. So hopefully they'll have my entire budget before they come into session next week. And. Uh, so I'll be making a few other announcements during the week regarding our budget. But uh, two weeks ago, we did uh, mention some major items in our education budget. And I did want to mention these to you. Uh, first of all, one of the recommendations I'm making is an average pay increase for every teacher, uh, for teachers, an average pay uh, increase of about 5% uh, pay increase for teachers. And that's about $2,000 plus for every teacher, in addition to a 35 uh, percent average bonus for teachers and that bonus is going to be more heavily targeted toward veteran teachers because they did not get the attributes of the one through seven year raise that we went from 30 35,000 dollars so that's it you probably didn't read about it much in the newspaper 
um, due to other issues, but frankly, it shouldn't have been on 3C. It should have been on the front page <coughs> regarding. So that's, um, you know, over an 8% new money for teachers throughout North Carolina that I'm recommending to the House and Senate, and I hope they uh, consider, consider that as <coughs> excuse me, quick as possible. But what this means is, for the first time in state history, the average teacher salary will be $50,000. The average teacher salary will be $50,000 plus $16,000 of benefits, which most people don't realize. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so for the first time in state history, $50,000 average salary pay for teachers and plus sixteen thousand dollars of benefits and that's good news for North Carolina and uh, that's sixty six thousand dollars of total compensation average for teachers and, uh, and I'm very very proud of that and it's really uh, also rewarding more experienced teachers which are very very important to our school system also um, one thing that I think we do need to reestablish and one senator and house member here uh, in previous years, they had a recruitment uh, uh, budget for new teachers. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I keep thinking I'm over this. It keeps coming back. The call is killing me. Um, <coughs> the, um, and what I want to do is <coughs> re-examine and reinstate a teacher scholarship program to encourage more people to get into teaching. But we're going to mainly target this for math and science teachers because that's where we're having the toughest recruitment is math and science at this point in time. And uh, so we're recommending $6,500 scholarships to attract 300 new teaching fellows. And this is throughout the state of North Carolina. And uh, I think this will be beneficial for all schools in North Carolina, both private and public, to encourage more of our uh, more people to get into education. But right now, the highest priority is math and science because that's where we're having the highest attrition according to my, uh, my uh, great assistant here. The other thing is that uh, Catherine really pushed in this budget on me was um, modernizing classrooms. You know, frankly, I think when we came to office, what percentage of the classrooms had access to the Wi-Fi? 22% um, of students had access to Wi-Fi. 22% of students had access to Wi-Fi in 2012-2013. Our goal is to uh, have 100% have access by 2018. And we're getting that up over 60 to 70% now, just in the last two years. And we plan to get that to 100% access by 2018. And that's, a, that's so important, especially to the schools in the mountains. You can clap on that. <laughs> But this is very, very important for all of us. And uh, also, you know, uh, something that we do have some unique kids with special needs. They might be uh, behavioral needs. They might be autism type issues. They might be other physical disabilities where our public schools cannot meet their needs. And we're going to target those uh, students and their parents who have some really unique needs. And they might not have the facilities in their county to help them. And so we're also asking for a, a $5.8 million to help those kids with those special needs uh, scholarships. And, uh, and a few other things that we're doing that I'm very, very pleased, but it shows that working together, getting feedback from this education cabinet, having a great um, education advisor, I think it's going to have a, a very positive impact. With